Of course, my name is Joe Wilkes. I'm a blacksmith, and what I concentrate on is ornamental line work, hand forged uh, ornamental line work. All of my work's done out of the forge and, and on the anvil. I grew up in the metal business. Uh, my father started a metal fabrication and welding shop after World War II, mm -hmm. and of course, I grew up in there. And about 20 years ago, I started getting involved with, uh, interested in blacksmithing and um, studied under several different people and and been picking it up a little bit along as I went. Yeah, the last guy that I've been studying with is a guy named Yuri Hoffi, an Israeli uh, gentleman actually designed this anvil and this hammer. And I took a few courses under him in the late 90s. In 2000, he invited eight blacksmiths from the United States and one from Great Britain that has studied with him over here invited us to his shop in Israel right outside Tel Aviv uh, to study with him in his shop. Everything I do pretty much is custom made. I don't make up anything in advance. Um, most of my work are gates, um, driveway gates, walkthrough gates, some interior doors, um, and then, like I say, everything is custom made to, to fit the particular uh, job itself. Nothing is prefabbed and nothing is made ahead of time. I've done a lot of work around here because it's a lot of history in Fairfield. But um, the Columbia area, around the beach, and the Charlotte area mm -hmm. is primarily. I've, I've got some work I did in Pennsylvania with a team of other blacksmiths at a folk school. And I've got one gate in Florida and one in Bahamas. The old style of blacksmith used coal, or actually coke, which is coal with the sulfur burned out. It burns hotter and cleaner. And I've got a coal forge. In fact, I've got two coal forges. But when you're in production work and trying to make a living, you got to increase your efficiency and, and decrease your time. And so now, even a traditional blacksmith shop primarily uses a gas forge. I have, of course you can see I have two gas forges and I primarily use this smaller one most of the time because it's got a real fast recovery time and you can work multiple pieces in it. There are three elements of hand forged ironwork and any ironwork you see in the world if it's not a casting involved will be a combination of these three elements. Of course it's different twists to it and you can put a ball in it or a ring but as far as the, the hand forged element you have a, an S scroll, a J scroll, and a C scroll. And everything that's made is a combination of those three. An example, this gate is actually in the, the Charlotte area. and. You see the C scrolls back to back. These are big J scrolls and big S scrolls. And all these little ones across the top are J scrolls. And these are S's. S's and J's put together. So it's just a, however you want to put them together to get the design and the effect you want. Is This is Philip Simmons in Charleston who's been given credit for doing most of the decorative work in Charleston. Um, he's a Palmetto honoree into the Hall of Fame for uh, Craftsman. And this picture was taken in 1996, and we were discussing the J-Scroll right then. And for Mr. Simmons, that's when I left and started studying with Yuri Hafi. This is Hafi from Israel. In fact, this picture was taken at a blacksmith school in uh, Potosi, Missouri, uh, in Ozarks. And this is about 1988, not 98. But he is, Hafi is given credit for being the premier teacher in blacksmithing today in the world. One other thing that we can do on iron work is split. This is heated up red hot and split with a chisel. And it gives you an eye effect and you can use it different elements in the, in the iron work. Another technique is twist. These are just various twists, and I'll show you a twist later on when I actually get to work. And then, of course, when you get angry, 
frustrated, sometimes you just tie a knot in the steel. Remember the S-scroll, I started this earlier, but we got to taper it so we can start the, the scroll. Tape it, always bringing the material back into dimension. We'll turn the edge over the anvil, roll it back, then we'll, that's our hook. Now we're going to start the scroll. Very important to get it very fluid. Because if it's not fluid, if you and it's not right, and you pass this stage, you cannot go back. Everything has got to be the way it should be before you move on. I'm gonna cool my handle off a little bit. Again, now we're gonna cool the tip. Just enough to keep losing it. Take it there. Bring it around there. We got to square them up, straighten them up. Bring it all back in line, all back in dimension, and then you have a nice looking escrow. I'm going to make a uh, J scroll right now. A little less complicated than the S, but has a little different feature. Again, we got to draw it out. We taper from the long end out to the end. On a nice, nice, smooth taper, and I'll be using this element a little bit later on. Even though it's cooled off some, we still got to cool that in. Got a good start for a J scroll. Now we're going to twist the steel. Actually, I need to be on this side. I clamp it right where I want to twist to stop. Put my tool where I want to twist to start. Twist it, make sure we stay lined up. Now I want to straighten this up, but I don't want to put any hammer marks on it. We don't want to scar, scar the material. Bring it all back into dimension. Clean the scale off. And you can see that the lines that we scored in there gave it definition and a little bit of character. I do not buy any components. I make all my scrolls, I make all my rings, I make my finials. So when I install a piece of work, it's 100% handmade by me. Um, now, I'm gonna put the finial on there with the power hammer. And Power hammers have been around since the beginning of blacksmithing. It was just different forms. The earliest one I've seen is, was drawn by horses and water wheels. We'd work on a cam and when the cam came to the top it would drop a big heavy piece of steel. Then it went to steam and this is air. 
So we're not really getting away from the traditional aspect of it. We're more or less following the old Chinese proverb that says, preserve the past, preserve the old, excuse me, preserve the old, but know the new. <laughs> That gives you a nice, nice finial. A good bit of my work, I use leaves, different shaped leaves, and all of them are made on the anvil out of the forge. In fact, I just completed one, one porch panel for a house over in Camden that had over 300 leaves in it. This is the style of of feather I used and this is style quill I used where I split it and made a little brass rivet to hold it together. Worked out very nicely. Now I'm going to set the base of the leaf. back to the finial. Now I want to spread it out a little bit and push the material using the peen of the hammer against the anvil. It's going to push but I'm going to stay away from the center because the center is going to be my vein. Now, a little bit. Now we have both sides flared out, but we have a centerpiece that I stayed away from. That's going to be the vein. On ornamental work, you don't, want, you don't want to hit the material and have to look to see what happened. You know what your hammer will do, and you put it where it needs to be the first time. Now, the drawing these veins out, I'm going to go to a smaller peen. Put these tributary veins in this side. Let's go to the other side. And there you have a nice looking leaf. Well, I've enjoyed giving this little small demonstration for you. Oh. If anyone would like to contact me, I'm in Winsboro. Uh, like I said, I do work all over the eastern seaboard right now. And you can contact me at, uh, in Winsboro. It's 803-635-4833. Or on the web, uh, the um, email address is wilkesrault at aol.com. Uh, appreciate any inquiries. If anyone out there has any interest in blacksmithing, I'd be glad to to show you what I know um, on a time permitting schedule. I learn by people showing me. It's not a, it's not a secret to it. If you got a desire to learn uh, and some time, I'd be glad to, to, to work with you. It's an art that we want to try to pass on. It almost had died out for a while, but it's, it's got some new interest and we'd like to see more young people get involved with it.